This video is about how to score the modified landing error scoring system. For scoring modified LES, we can use different uh, video analysis software, for example, Kinovia. First item is the knee flexion at initial contact. First, we need to find the initial contact, so we move frame by frame to find the frame when the toes first touch the floor. Yeah, so I think it's over here. To measure the knee angle, we use the angle function of Kinovia and we place the cross on the lateral epiconda of femur, so somewhere close to the center of the knee joint. One of the dots goes to the great trochanter uh, and the other dot goes to the lateral malleolus or lateral ankle. So now we approximately see the angle. It's 153. Uh, this is inverse angle. We can do the uh, supplementary angle here and we see that the knee angle is 27 degrees. Error is present when the angle is less than 15 degrees. So in our case, 27 degrees is more than 15 degrees. So it's okay and no error is present. The second item is the hip flexion at initial contact. Again, we can use the angle measure. This time we will put the cross on a uh, trochanter major, so somewhere around the hip joint. One side goes to the lateral epicondyle of the femur and the other one goes parallel to the trunk, so parallel with the spine of the participant. Yes, yeah, sometimes it goes somewhere close to the acromion uh, of the shoulder. Again, we can do the supplementary angle and see that the hip angle is 38 degrees, so it's more than zero, so again, the error is not present. The trunk angle at initial contact. I will take the angle measure, I will place the cross on the hip center, so close to the trochanter major, and, it, and I will do 90 degrees, which is, this is the, that's how it would look like if he would be vertical, if the trunk would be extended on the hips. We see that in this case, his case is not true and we can measure this angle so we can align the other line with his spine, so to be parallel with his spine. And we see that his uh, trunk angle at initial contact is 15 degrees, which is more than zero. That's why he's not scored error for this one. Next item is ankle plantar flexion at initial contact. Again, we can use the angle. We can place the cross on uh, lateral malleolus, lateral ankle. One dot goes to the uh, lateral epicondyle of the knee and the second goes kind of parallel with the shoe. We can again use the supplementary angle and we see that this uh, participant has 45 degrees of plantar flexion, which is more than 5 degrees. So again, in this case, the error is not present. Another item is scored from the front view. Again, on the front view video, we find the initial contact. And now we are interested in medial uh, knee position. So we grab the line function and we try to connect the hip, follow the femur and connect it with center of patella and draw this line. And we are interested if this line is going through the uh, ankle, through the ankle joint center or not. If it goes medially, for example, if it would be like that, going medially to the center of the ankle joint, it would be error. But in our case, because it doesn't go medially to the ankle uh, joint center, we will not score an error in this case. Lateral trunk flexion at initial contact. Again, we will use the angle measure. We will place the cross somewhere in the middle of the pelvis, close to the symphysis. Now it will draw us 90 degrees angle and we are interested how big is the angle between vertical and participant trunk center line. So we will place the other line to follow the sternum, so to be somewhere close to the center or the midline of the trunk. And we see it's 22 degrees. The error it is when the, this angle is more than 10 degrees. So in our case, because it's 22, the error is present. The next two items are observing the foot position. So either if the foot is extremely externally rotated or internally rotated. Uh, and it measures within the movement, which happens between initial contact and maximum flexion. So I recommend you to go frame by frame and find the frame when you perceive that the position of the foot is mostly rotated. 
Yeah, so we see that this participant is pretty good. There is not a lot of food rotation. The food is always pretty parallel. Uh, so in his case, there will be no error for external or internal rotation. But if you are not sure, you can measure the angle again. So you place the cross in the center of the ankle joint. So just between uh, the ankles. And you will place one dot to 90 degrees. So that's how it should be. That's how it should be perfectly parallel with his ankle center. And the other dot should go be aligned with the second toe. So uh, with the center of the foot. So here we see that this participant has very slight external rotation of 14 degrees, uh, which is less than 35. And that's why it's not error. There is definitely no internal rotation within movement, as we can see, so that item will be no error as well. The upcoming three items are interested in displacement of the joint between initial contact and maximum inflection. So basically, how, was, how big was the range of motion between these two time points? We already measured the, the angle at initial contact. So now we need to measure the angle at maximum knee position and we will just subtract the angle uh, at initial contact from the angle at maximal position. So the first joint, we will be the knee. So we go frame by frame to find the maximal knee position. So we are looking when the knee is keep flexing, keep flexing, and there will be this point when the participant will start push up. Yeah, I feel it's, it's right now when his body is going uh, uh, forward and upwards so I go a little bit back and I think yeah now it may be the maximal knee position angle so I will measure this angle the same as before the same as I did during the initial contact so I will place the cross at the lateral epicondyle of the femur one of the dot goes to the trochanter major so the close to the hip joint and another line goes to the medial, oh, sorry, lateral ankle. I can do the supplementary angle and now I see I have 75 degrees. So for example, at initial contact, this participant had 25 degrees. Now at maximum inflection, he has 75 degrees, which means that the displacement of the knee is 50 degrees, which is larger than 30 degrees. Therefore, no error is present. I will do the same for the hip joint. So. Again, similar at the initial, as the initial contact, I will place the cross on the hip, so on the uh, trochanter major. Somewhere here, one dot goes uh, to the uh, knee center, so lateral epicondyle femur. And this one I'm trying to go parallel with the spine. Yeah, usually it goes somewhere in the center of the shoulder. And I see that this angle is 98 degrees. And again, I will subtract the angle at initial contact, the hip angle at initial contact from this angle of 98 degrees. And I will see how, the, how big is the angle. Uh, if the angle is bigger than zero, then there is a no, no error. In this case, we saw that he went to some displacement in the hip, so there is no error. And lastly, I will do the same for the trunk angle. So I will take the angle measure, uh, put the cross on the hip center, so trochanter major. Now I have 90 degrees. That's how it would look like when he strung would be vertical. And I want to measure the angle between the vertical line, so between the 90 degrees line. And this line will be aligned parallel to his spine, going somewhere close to the shoulder center. And I see that uh, the trunk angle at maximal knee position is 40 degrees. I will subtract the original angle. And if uh, the displacement is larger than five degrees, there is no error present. So in this case, there is no error present. Mandial knee displacement. For this one, I need to go through whole range of motion between initial contact and maximal knee position. And I'm looking for the frame when, I, when it seems that his knee is most medial, it's in most valgus or medial position. So I go frame by frame and I'm trying to observe where I feel that his knee is going the most medial. So I will go back. Yeah, and I feel it somewhere over here. His knee is in, in the most valgus position. 
Now I can use in the tools, I can use coordinate system and I will align this line with the center of the patella and I'm interested if this vertical line, the red line, goes outside of his ankle center, so center of his ankle joint. And I see that in his case, it's true, it's going a little bit outside of the center of his ankle joint. That's why I would score it as an error. The last item is lateral flexion displacement. So basically we are interested if the person increased the lateral flexion between initial contact to maximal knee flexion. So here we have a lateral flexion of the trunk of 18 degrees at initial contact. And now I can go frame by frame and check if the person goes even to larger degree of trunk lateral flexion. In the case of these participants, it seems that the angle is decreasing. So he is not going to more and more lateral flexion. Uh, if I continue, yeah, you see that he is getting to the center now. So in his case, uh, this error wouldn't be present because he is not displacing his trunk to more lateral flexion within the whole movement. I recommend you to have an Excel sheet when you will score each item as a 0 or 1 and then you can count uh, the total score of modified landing error scoring system. So that's the modified list. Enjoy scoring!